Dr. Bernard. We're in Acts chapter 7, and this is the last sermon on heroes in Acts 7. We're looking at Stephen today. And yes, we do have the right uh, sermon outline in the bowl. <laughs> Acts 7, verse 51. You men who are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears are always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. Which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who had previously announced the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers have you have now become. You who received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you did not keep it. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at him. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. Up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and covered their ears, and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. In the first verse of chapter 8, Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Stephen ends this offensive after talking about Abraham and Joseph and Moses and David before the Jewish council, the Sanhedrin. And he accused them of doing the very same thing mm -hmm. that their father, forefathers had done with the prophets. Stephen uses pretty keen debating skills here. He did so so he could get a hearing. And he, he got one. But in this passage of Scripture today, he is pulling out all the stops. He unleashes a harsh accusation against the Jewish leaders of Israel. <coughs> Truth is told. Stephen lets him have it. Both barrels, he tells the truth. He calls these Jewish leaders stiff necked, which simply means they were rebellious and hard headed. Do you know anybody like that? Yeah. Well, maybe you're kinder than Stephen and you don't tell them what, they, what you really think about them. These Jewish leaders' jaw was set. Their mind was already made up. And even though these Jewish leaders were circumcised, their hearts and their ears were not circumcised. In other words, they could talk the talk, but they weren't walking the walk. Do you know anybody like that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Reminded me of the uh, story Jesus told about the guy who was dressed really fine and standing on the street corners and made a big scene and prayed and everything to God. <laughs> and then the poor sinner who humbly bowed his head and prayed to God. God said, that man is the one I want to listen to. <laughs> These Jewish leaders, they, they resisted the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit was trying to do 
And you know, when you resist the Holy Spirit long enough, He will leave you. He doesn't like it when He's grieved. They resisted the Holy Spirit, and what the Holy Spirit wanted to do with them. They had become betrayers and murderers, Stephen says. And he's not pulling any punches, is he? Just like their fathers had done to the prophets. I like the question he asked. Is there a prophet who did not get persecuted? <laughs> no, there wasn't any. The Jewish nation persecuted them all. They had been given the law, and yet they didn't keep it. We have been given the Bible. Are we keeping it? They were basically hypocrites. So they were trying to be something they really weren't. They looked like what they wanted to be, but they inside they were not. So even though the truth was told, the truth was rejected. Stephen seems to have realized that his message was not falling on ears that were listening. It was not being received very well. And so he begins his ambassading of these Jewish leaders. You know, we really don't know a whole lot about Stephen. The, the few things that we do know, he, he possibly was one of the 3,000 who were converted on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. We are told that, but it's possible he was one of those. From Acts chapter 6, we know he was a man who was full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. I guess that would be enough, wouldn't it? <laughs> if you were known as a man of faith and a man full of the Holy Spirit, that would be enough. Mm -hmm. I'd settle for that. That's in verse 5, chapter 6. We know he was one of the seven selected from among the believers to help serve and care for the needs of widows. From this speech in chapter 7 of Acts, we can tell some things about Stephen. We can tell he was a man of God who was willing to stand up for Jesus Christ his Savior. We can tell that he was the kind of Christian that we want, ought to be. He was the kind of Christian that was willing to die for his faith and what he believed. He, he died a good death. Now, some of you may say, well, how can you die a good death? Isn't all death bad? Well, no, I don't think it is. I'm looking forward to dying a good death. And if you're a Christian, you ought to be also, I think. You see, some people, they will not accept the truth. In Stephen's case, the Jewish leaders were cut to the quick in their hearts because they were hearing something they didn't, didn't want to hear. And the reason they were cut to the quick in their hearts was because they probably knew it was the right, it was the truth, but they weren't going to, to, to accept it. It says, they gnashed their teeth. I don't know exactly what that meant other than they were, they were just really angry. They were really upset because of what, Pete, what Stephen was saying here about them. And so the gnashing of the teeth was what they did to show their opposition against Stephen and what he was saying. I guess, you know, if you were, if you were at a political rally and there were people in the back that were making a scene because they didn't like what was being said, uh, that would be kind of similar to gnashing the teeth in showing opposition to what was being said. This angry reaction against the spiritual leaders of Israel, what Stephen said, proved that they were really rejecting the Holy Spirit. Just as, just as Stephen claimed. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a person by how they react to the truth. Verse 7. 
Let's talk about Stephen's good death. He said the truth, the truth was rejected, and then they stoned him. Stephen says, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed up into heaven, and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at God's right hand. Stephen told the Jewish leaders that he saw God. He saw Jesus standing at God's right hand. And that's when they turned on him. The text says they cried out with loud voices, covered their ears, rushed upon Stephen, driving him out of the city with one large crushing impulse. It was like a, a wave of people, and Stephen couldn't do anything about it. He had to go with the flow until they were outside the city. And once they were outside the city, they began picking up rocks and stoning him, throwing them at him. If you've ever been over there, you know there's no shortage of rocks. It wasn't too hard to find one. And even as Stephen was being pelted by these rocks and stones, he called out to the Lord. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Can you think of anybody else who said basically the same thing? <laughs> exactly. Stephen was in pretty good company and he's dying. Falling on his knees, uh, Stephen prayed, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Again, similar to what Jesus said on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. As all this was happening, there was a guy by the name of Saul there. He was in full agreement with what was happening, it says. So basically, he was approving of the murder of Stephen. And it says that the people who were throwing the stones had taken off their robes and they were laying their robes and their coats at, Steve, at Paul's feet, Saul's feet. They were called Paul. In chapter 8, verse 2, which we didn't read, it says that there were some devout men who came and buried Stephen. I don't, we aren't told who these devout men were. Probably brothers in Christ, fellow Christians. Stephen's stoning, his death, his murder, began something that turned out to be good. It caused all the Christians in Jerusalem to be scattered. Now, it could have been something that was bad. But the reason we can say it was good is because even though these Christians had to flee and become refugees in other places, they continued to hold on to their faith and share it with other people. And so as a result, the church began to spread and grow in other places. Just like Acts 1.8 said. It began in Jerusalem, then spread to Judea and Samaria, then eventually to the other parts of the world. That's one of the reasons I say Stephen's death was a good death. Because even though it was a bad thing to have happen, God produced something good in the primitive. In my years in the ministry, I've had over 200 funerals. And for many of them, I was present for the person who was dying, whose funeral I had. It's never easy to die. It's never easy to watch someone die. But when they know Jesus Christ as their Savior, like Stephen did, there's just a sense of peace about the whole thing. Because you know what's, what's coming next. They're saying goodbye to this world, but they're saying hello to a greater and better world for all eternity. How you choose to die is pretty much dependent, I think, on how you have chosen to live. If you have chosen to live walking with God, then your dying 
is just a transition so that you're with him face to face. Some of you are aware of the battle with cancer that Joy Feek has been struggling with for some time. Joy and her husband Rory have a little girl they named Indiana. Because they're actually from Alexandria, Indiana. They, uh, they are part of Bill Gaither's family of singers. They sing mainly country and bluegrass type music. Joy has made a, cha made a choice to die good. Even though cancer is ravaging her body, she has chosen to die good. I want you to just listen to this song that the Peaks have written and Joey sings. It's called When I'm Gone.
kind of picture up there, see her singing that, but, but uh, had technical difficulties. If you want to watch that song, you can get on YouTube and just type in her name or When I'm Gone, and you'll probably be able to find it. I want us to conclude this message by seeing four things about Stephen's good death. Number one, Stephen faced death without fear. He could do that only because he knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. As we face our death, if Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we will not need to fear death. The second thing I want you to see is that Stephen faced death with no bitterness in his heart. Like Jesus, he too prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. When we come to the end of our earthly life, we should not be bitter about anything. Because we're going to see the Savior who we lived for. Number three, as a follower of Jesus, Stephen faced death with his eyes focused squarely on Jesus. Remember it said it, he looked up and he saw God and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. As Stephen was dying, his thoughts were in the right place. He knew there was eternity waiting for him. And it was even better than the life he knew here on earth. And the fourth thing, Stephen knew scripture. When you go back and read this seventh chapter of Acts, every person he talked about, all these heroes that he mentioned, he knew their stories. He knew how they lived their life. He knew what they'd done for God. And as he's addressing the Sanhedrin, he, he told their stories. We need to know the scriptures too. You see, Stephen didn't just know the scriptures as ancient history. He knew scripture as God's story. And he wasn't afraid, even in the face of death, to tell the story. <coughs> because he had the hope that only God's word gives. Stephen was prepared for a good death, in part, because he lived and breathed the scriptures. Stephen is the third person whose death we, we read about in the New Testament. First, there was John the Baptist. He was killed by Herod, and his head was brought in on a silver platter. Remember that story? Maybe you acted it out at church camp on Bible drama night. John the Baptist's death was a sin against God. Because God had sent him to prepare the way for the Messiah. The Jews asked Pilate to kill Jesus. The second death we read about. This was a sin about, against God's Son, against Jesus. Because his trial was illegal. They sinned against Jesus. And that, then we read today about Stephen stoning. Stephen is the third person that we read about who was killed. The stoning of Stephen was a sin against the Holy Spirit. I don't know if there's any significance to that or not, but it, it kind of jumped out at me. The Holy Spirit was working with the apostles and with the early church and trying to get it off the ground. Satan is alive and well. And death is one of his weapons. 
Most of you have heard of Jim Elliott, who was a missionary to the Aka Indians in South America. The very, the very people he was trying to save killed him. We probably know him best from his famous statement, He is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Have you heard that before? He's probably known for that, but he said a lot of other things too. In Jim's diary, he wrote some lesser known things that uh, I want to share with you. One of them is this. He said, I seek not a long life, but a full life. Like you, Lord Jesus. Because Jesus' life wasn't very long either, was it? But there's never been a life better. Two years after Jim wrote that first that statement I just read about seeking not a long life but a full one, like the Lord Jesus, he wrote something else. Two years later, he said this, I must not think it strange if God takes in youth those whom I, have, whom I would rather have kept on earth until they were much older. He went on to say, God is peopling eternity, and I must not restrict him to old men and old women. God can people eternity and heaven with whoever he wants. Are you prepared to die a good death like Stephen? You can be if you're, if you're walking with the Lord. If you know him as your Lord and Savior, we're going to be singing an invitation time this morning, offering that opportunity. We have to remember Jesus' words in Revelation 2, the last part of verse 10 says, Be thou faithful until death. It doesn't say until you get old and die. It just says, Be faithful until you die. And I, Jesus says, And I will give you the crown of Life. Will you be one of those people I see in eternity? I'm planning on being there, and I hope you are too. But you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you need to be following Him. Stephen was a hero in Acts 7 because he showed us how to live and how to die. You need to make a decision today. We invite you to come and stand as we stand.